Hello, Hateless Gaming here, bringing you another burner guide. We have the Talos burner today, my favorite because you get a lot of faction loot and it pays well. It's a simple burner, but you can easily get killed while doing it wrong. For this burner, I recommend the Demos. Because of its massive tank, it's fairly quick and has a high DPS. For the fitting of this ship, we have... I brought this up in the wrong order, sorry. But we have in the highs, we have uh, uh, five heavy neutron blaster twos. We have in the mids we have three cap recharger twos and for the micro warp drive we have a 50 mn a quad lf restrained micro warp drive we use this one because it has it lowers your it has a lower sig radius bloom in the lows we have two armor reps a kinetic hardener and a thermal hardener and two magnetic field stabilizers for the rigs we have an auxiliary nano pump and a anti-therm pump on this fitting, we're able to either be shiny or not shiny. As you see here, I have two fittings shown. Uh, one is a pure T2 fit, which works. Sometimes you have to be careful and use your second repper more often. But with the shinier fit, it's a lot safer and you can do it much easier. For skills to fly the Demos, you're going to need at least Glente Cruiser 5. And you're going to need Heavy Assault Cruisers to 1 or higher. Uh, Glente Cruiser being right here, and then Heavy Assault Cruisers to 3 or 4 uh, to be able to uh, fly the ship well. Being 4, you'll have more DPS and stuff. In Engineering, you're going to want all your capacitor skills up to 5 so that you can permanently rep one of the armor reppers, both hardeners, and have the micro warp drive running at the same time. Uh, I think you can have one or two of them to four, but I would really recommend them to five. So then you have extra capacitor to run your second armor wrapper as needed. And then in armor, uh, not much is really needed here. You really need repair systems to five to get the most out of your out of one armor wrapper so you can run one full time and then you won't have to run the second one so much, but you can get away with four. We, we're not shield tanking, so we don't need shield skills. Targeting skills are helpful if you have long range targeting because you get sensor damp pretty hard. For gunnery, we want T2 guns. You can get away with meta four and then level four or higher support skills. And then for drones, you really don't need anything. And in navigation, you want... I lost it, hold on, I can't find navigation. But in navigation, there's a skill that reduces or increases the duration of your micro warp drive cycle which is extremely helpful when you're trying to live longer and have a longer cap so on this mission it's my favorite because it's it's easy to do and it pays really well but if you don't know what you're doing you can die really easily so we're going to go in and i'm going to show you what's okay. going on before you go in you want to activate both of your hardeners and one of your reppers this will keep you alive when you land on grid and there are three taloses when you land they are all three very deadly if you don't move so we immediately want to point our ship in the direction that we're going to go in our case it's going to be the right i'll show you what's going on here in just a second but we're going to get moving we're going to turn on our micro drive so all these little blue dots are uh inert proximity activated um what are they called inert proximity activated auto turrets so what that means is once you get within 10 kilometers the circle here of any one of these little circles They'll start shooting you, and they do a different damage type than the Taloses. The Taloses do kinetic and thermal damage. These do EM damage. If you start getting hit by them, they're going to do a lot more damage, and it's going to become much more dangerous to scoop the first wreck. So as you can see right now, this little blue line showing where we're going. We're making our way outside of this field. Once we get outside of the field, what we're going to do is we're going to turn towards the first one, and then we're going to turn towards the second one, and then we're going to turn towards the third one. It's a really easy fight because they don't have a giant active tank, but the extra DPS that uh, the Demos has over the Vagabond, the Cerberus, and other heavy assault cruisers is that is that it has more DPS, so it's able to kill them quicker. They they have got a lot of health. So now that we've cleared our way out of the minefield, we're going to make our way to the first burner. Uh, the first Talos is the most dangerous to fight because you have the other two shooting you as well. As long as you keep your traversal up with this guy and this guy, you should be fine. But sometimes if you if you directly approach or slow down too much or accidentally go in the wrong direction and, and approach one of them while you're fighting the other, it can easily kill you. Uh, once you're, uh, the, the burner Talos' gun range is 
60 kilometers. So if you get underneath their guns, they're a lot less scary. Uh, once you get underneath 60 kilometers, you can almost directly approach them. Once you're under 30, you can turn off your micro warp drive, which is what we did here. We're gonna lock them up. You can't lock them until you're within 30 kilometers. So that kind of eliminates using long range guns. That's why we use the short range guns. We're just gonna fire away and get them down. Now, this is the most dangerous part because we're not, we don't have micro warp drive active. We're not speed tanking at the moment. So we gotta make sure we keep our traversal up with this guy and this guy, like I said earlier, or we will die. I've, I've almost died in this mission several times because I didn't pay attention to my traversal. I've actually died a couple times as well. But we just want to make sure that we keep our traversal up while we fight these two guys. Occasionally, when we launch drones, what happens is one of them will yellow box us and start shooting the drones instead. That's a good thing because when we go to scoop the wreck of the first one, it'll be shooting our drone instead of us. So that makes it a lot safer. The most dangerous moment in doing the burner towers is when we loot the wrecks. So as you see here, this guy's almost dead and we're not in loot range, but we're trying to keep that range about the same right now until he dies. And then once he dies, we're gonna go towards him and scoop the loot. You really wanna make sure that when you're going over, you double click to go over. And then you want to open the cargo while moving. You wanna make sure that you don't select open cargo while you're not moving uh, or while you're out of range because then once you get in range you'll stop moving and that'll get you killed so now that we are we've finished the first one we can start working on working on getting towards this, the second one you don't want to directly approach them because their dps is very very high and it will get you killed to directly approach them but like i said once you're within 60 kilometers you you're underneath their guns and as long as you have any traversal they'll always miss and now that we're at a simple part, I don't really have much else to add on how to fight these. You just want to make sure that you go around the outside of these and get them done without triggering these things here. So as you can see, we did get a faction drop, which is awesome. I'm going to slow down and let you guys soak that in. Uh, for the third one, we don't have to worry so much about tripping one of these sensors because we've got enough tank to tank three of them. We can not worry too much. So we're going to almost directly approach the third one. And then we're going to kill him and check his loot as well, see if there's anything good. There's one left and we haven't tripped any sensors, so we're going to almost directly approach him. We're not going to directly approach him until he's within 60. For the third one, once he's within 60, we can just tell our ship to orbit him. Because we're not worried about our traversal with the other ships. And we'll be good to just blast him once we get close. And once the other ones are dead, we can lock them, the third one out, at almost 60 kilometers. Cycle to my warp drive. And we're in range, so we're, just, we're gonna finish them up. I'm gonna tell it to orbit. As soon as the yellow boxes, we're gonna keep it range. He's not trying to shoot us, he's trying to keep sure drones. Uh, as long as he, once he yellow boxes one of your drones, you can switch over to 
just keep me at range, but only for the third one. A uh, couple quick rules while fighting Bernard Bernard Talos's is never directly approach a Bernard Talos. And always make sure that you're using your micro warp drive between them, otherwise it's gonna take a week to get through. But other than that, it's a pretty easy mission to fly once you figure out a fit that works for you. You just go around and kill them. It's pretty simple. Hopefully we get another faction drop here because we got a faction drop on the first on the second one. That was really awesome. And check that really quick. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to hit the subscribe button, like, and comment as well. Everybody fly safe and have a good day.